All right, good evening, everyone. Good evening. And welcome. Thank you. To the first collective collaborative campaign for power. Yeah. Shout out. And what a year for this to happen, right? What a year. I want to thank everybody that came out today. You will get a chance to know who's all here, what they do, where they're located, how you can get involved as well. I'm thanking you. Everyone that came in from the Black Political Empowerment Project, we thank all of you. The uh, WPA C4P partners, thank you for this press conference and the importance of our vote this year. It is so critical. I don't care what side of the table you're on. And every year we hear it on the news every day, every year, voting year, they say, this is the most important vote of your life. Every year they say it. I don't think it holds true till the day, till this year. So I want to thank everyone for coming in. I'm Valerie Dixon, the vice chair of BPEP, alongside of the chair, president, CEO, and everything else, Mr. Tim Stevens. And we actually want to introduce definitely to as well um, the Port Authority, Port Authority campaign that we're going to be doing in the Billboard campaign. We'll be talking about that a bit too. Unleashed and unlaunched and launched in the community throughout Allegheny County so that nobody can say they didn't see it or they didn't know. So an uh, introduction of two traditional partners has been there on the ground since the beginning. A lovely Esther L. Bush and Richard A. Stewart Jr. All right, here we go. Thank you, Mr. Bush. It's all good. Thank you much. And it 
is so critically important, important for us to understand where we are and where we're going and the power we have. Unless this is fixed quickly, potential, there are thousands of voters who are at risk of disenfranchisement in the November election. Also, our National Urban League and our 90 affiliates across the country have worked with Congress to push for absentee voting and voting by mail. But it is up to you to register to vote and encourage your family and friends to do the same. Plan your vote. First and foremost, you need to register to vote and verify that you are in fact registered to vote. Second, consider your voting options. Confirm your registration. Make sure you still live at the address listed on your registration. Make sure the spelling of your name on your ID matches exactly the spelling on your registration. Plan your vote. Third, please know your candidates and know their issues. Believe it or not, there are issues in the United States that we need to be on top of, even though, have we really heard about them from everybody? Did I say that? <laughs> Voting is more about deciding, is about more than deciding who will be president for the next four years. It's choosing who will represent you in Congress, writing laws in, in your favor, or laws that are against your interests. It's about choosing judges who stand up for equality and fairness, or judges who continue to push the status quo. Plan your vote. Fourth, please find your polling location. You know, many of them have moved. Mine moved and I had to find it. And I found it and I voted. On election day, every voter has to vote in the assigned location on your registration form. That includes each and every a friend or neighbor with you. This is a family affair. And with all hands on deck, that will really become necessary come November 3rd. We want to thank you. We want to thank Tim Stevens. And I tell you, the Urban League of Greater Pittsburgh is just proud to be a part of this campaign because we know there is power in numbers. And we all have to plan our vote. And because this is the Urban League, I also ask that you be sure you're accounted in the census. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Esther Bush. Very powerful voice in our community for many, many years. She's tackled a lot of the topics, and I know she feels this one right here is on the top of her list. So what you just heard, the fact she just gave you, that ain't no fake news. That's some real stuff right there. No fake news. No fake news. So uh, Richard had to step out for a second. Richard A. Stewart, president of NAACP Pittsburgh Branch. So he should be back shortly. And I'm more than honored and pleased to invite to the microphone a dear, dear friend of mine and also, as Tim calls, uh, Ms. Elma B. Fox, his uh, civil rights mom. <laughs> exactly. This woman is my civil rights sister. She took, she shows me how to do it, and she, when I look at her, I know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> so I want to invite, and very happy to invite Celeste Taylor. We have generations together, and new staff members will be following along with her as well that she will introduce. Here you go, my sister. Before I take the microphone, I just want you to say Wakanda forever. Woo! Outstanding. Wow, what a beautiful.
wonderful evening. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, I do know many of you, but it's so nice to have new faces. Um, my name is Celeste Taylor. I've been a part of BPEP for many, many years. And I tried to retire, but my ancestors wouldn't let me. Neither would Tim. And neither would my dear sister, Valerie and Lorraine. I hope she gets here because she put this program together. <laughs> and um, I'm so excited to be a part of BPEP at this time in the Western Pennsylvania campaign for power. You show us what democracy looks like. And with the project, BPEP Generations Together, we wanna show not just in our words, but in our deeds. Show you all that we're about having our generations get out and vote and work together and uplift our communities. With that said, I am so proud that BPEP has hired three dynamic women. Yeah. Black girl power. So I'm gonna invite them up because they make us shine. So Caleb, Samaya, and Terry. I guess we need to spray this again. <laughs> It's really nice to see you guys all come out in support of making sure we fight voter suppression in the Pittsburgh area. My name is Calix Deroche. This is Terry Mana Spencer. And we are new employees of DPEP, and we're very excited to work with the community and work with our partners to make sure that our voices are heard and that people are voting and they have the education necessary to vote for whomever they decide to vote for. So I am so happy to see you guys. I'm excited to work with some of the partners in the future. And I am so happy, and I could just keep saying that over and over again, but I'm so happy to be a part of BPEP. And I'm really excited for November. Thank you. studying psychology, international, rela <laughs> international relations, and politics. Um, I'm so excited to join BPEP in order to expand uh, voter outreach in the Pittsburgh community. Um, I'll be working with Tim for BPEP, um, as well as trying to partner with my sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, uh, which I'm the president for. Um, so I look forward to working with you all. Thank you. I'm Terry Minor Spencer. Um, I am extremely happy to be working with BPEP and other organizations like Western Power and all of you, Moms Demand Action. Um, yeah, so we are very uh, happy and honored to have the privilege to make sure that our voices are heard and make sure that we are in the fight together. We want you to re-angle so while we're talking to the people, you can see our face, but we're talking to our constituents. <laughs> thank you, and thank you for our new hires and the new energy, the youthfulness. You make me want to go home and take my Geritol because I missed it today. Ooh, I don't know how I'm going to keep up with them. I don't know how I'm going to keep up. <laughs> but y'all bring in new energy, and that's what we need. We need some young people out here. Matter of fact, they have a block party here. If y'all didn't know, people having their block parties trying to get out. Usually, usually Thursday.
Friday and Saturday night. If you're bold enough, come on down and register some of the young people to go out here tonight. <laughs> uh, I'd like to know, is Mr. K. Chase Hansen in the house? Oh, oh we're going to give him auntie time. See? That's why I don't work in the media. <laughs> I've had everybody's back <laughs> through the whole program. Well, we are sending prayers out to Mr. Patterson. He's not feeling well. But we know that his energy, his drive, his collaborative skills, no, no those one. people he brings to the okay. table will help in the efforts that we're trying to do. Because November 3rd, is not going to be anything like it this year. We're going to see something really, really different at those polls. The weeks before in the mail, whatever it is, say hi to your mailman when he comes. You know, give him a right. cookie, something, something like that. <laughs> Let him know you appreciate him. I am very, very honored also to be able to call to the microphone another young lady that's been around this hard, heavy fight for many, many years. But her motto and her inner spirit and just looking at her says nothing but peace amongst us, my people. I am so happy to be able to bring up to the mic Sister Barbara Finch so she can give a tribute to Congress, Congressman John Moose. Keep them this way, man. Just keep them facing this way. We're going to have our speaker. We, uh, we tell what we did. We turned the speaker uh, this way. But for the camera, I think we want to see the people in the background. Exactly. So just listen. Somebody's calling. Nobody? Sunrise. Sunrise. Well, friends, in every age and indeed every generation. Okay. In every. In every age and in every generation, there is persons that walk among us that literally has embraced prophetic wisdom and embodied justice. And no less is Congressman John Lewis is one of those people. Early on in his life, he heard the call from our divine creator and what he, te what he has taught us over the years is that life is not a spectator, spectator sport. That each of us were born for a purpose. Our purpose is to serve one another and to transform the injustices that exist among us. He also learned that democracy is not something that is freely given. It is blood, sweat, and tears, and often offering one's life that democracy happens. And democracy must be, uh, uh, we must all participate in democracy for it to be realized. And that means to vote. What does it mean? To vote. He spent most of his life advocating that there should be free and honest elections and voting in our midst. And not only that, after we vote, what must we do? We must advocate to, uh, for policy changes. So it's not matter, just a matter of voting. It is a matter of participating together that we work to end unfair housing. That we have, um, we end the, the food deserts. That we end the, the deplorable criminal justice system that is unfair. That we have fair health care for everyone. That we, we eliminate redlining and gerrymandering that is unfair. All this is participating in racism, which we must end. And we must work together, whether, what, whatever, whatever race we are, we must work together. Right. John always crossed bridges. We're a city of bridges. And so I commend to all of us to 
begin crossing our bridges, crossing our rivers, get to know each other in all our neighborhoods. All of us are not free unless, uh, unless everyone is free. And then, so let's work together in order that that might happen. One image I want to leave with you is days before he died, before he took his last breath. He stood on Black Lives Matter Plaza Square in Washington, D.C. It's symbolic of passing the torch. I commend all young people to accept that torch and move us along. But however, it matters not how young you are or how old you are. We're all responsible to make a di difference. This is one of the things that John has commended us to do. I appeal to all of you to get into this great revolution that is sweeping the nation. Get in and stay in the streets of every city, every village and hamlet of this nation, and until true freedom comes, until the revelation of 1776 is complete. We must get in this revolution and complete the revolution. For in the Delta and Mississippi, in Southwest Georgia, in the Black Belt of Alabama, in Harlem, in Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia, and of course Pittsburgh, and all over this nation, the black masses are on the march for jobs and freedom. No matter what race you are, we must walk together, we must march together, we must work together for change. Thank you. taken to the heart. I mean, no no stronger words still prevail. We have to keep his legacy. We are his legacy. That's right. We are our ancestors' legacy. Don't hurt. And we are in this fight for real. We are truly in this fight for real. I think about the days, if we were, if it was slavery days, I used to say now, like, oh, Lord, I couldn't have lived in the slavery days. They'd have been killed me. But if I had this team of people, I'll be going to your great great grandma's house. They be having the hood. You be feeding me. We be bringing my family. Come on, everybody. This is what it really, really looks like. This is what America right here should look like. What we're looking at right now. And we want to sustain that. And that's why it's so important for everybody to know about this year's election and what you need to do. Okay, I am very honored to bring to the to the podium. Ms. Martha Conley, she actually is um, going to share information from the Black Women's Suffrage. And she really opened my eyes this past uh, Saturday when we were down there with B. Marshall's uh, Juneteenth event. She has she, she said some stuff that I, I, I was like, oh my goodness, I feel shame I didn't know that. We really got to we really gotta know what we really out here for so we can really dig deep and let people know why this is so important. My honor and privilege. Miss Martha Connie. I'm not going to give the same speech I gave on Saturday. But I do want to say my introduction to voting was in 1953 when I went to when I went to uh, the polls with my great aunt Sarah. And she voted for Eisenhower. She was a staunch Republican, one generation out of slavery. And uh, she was a staunch member of the party of Lincoln. And I could tell from her attitude, she took a little heat because uh, a lot of people were voting Democratic by that time, but she took a little heat for voting for Eisenhower but she didn't care. And it was obvious to me that she was very touched and very uh, glad to be able to cast her vote. 
in that election. Uh, if she had been in Virginia, she probably would not have been able to. And certainly without the 19th Amendment, she would not have been able to. The 19th Amendment, the struggle started in 1848 for women's suffrage. And a lot of times people uh, think that this was a white women's movement. And largely it was, but I do want to mention it started, as I said, in 1848 with the Women's Rights uh, Convention. And the only black person there was Frederick Douglass, and he spoke on behalf of women's suffrage. I wanted to mention that black women and others were also involved uh, in the suffrage movement. Uh, for example, Helen, Nanny Helen Burroughs was involved in DC. There were indigenous women from the uh, from the Iroquois and um, uh, Sioux Nation who were involved. There were also, also Asian women who were involved in the struggle, which took 70 years. And we think today that it's a no-brainer, but uh, it was hotly contested back then. My grandmother, Emma Ritt, was a suffragist, and she was a member of the uh, Lucy Stone Suffrage League. Lucy Stone was an abolitionist first, and once the uh, Reconstruction Amendments were passed, she became a women's suffragist. And my grandmother had suffrage meetings in her house uh, on Susquehanna Street in Homewood, which was a suburb back then. And my great aunt Sarah Rick Dunstan was a concert, uh, she was an opera singer, and she held uh, benefits to raise money for suffragists so they could travel to Washington, D.C. and other places and meetings so that they could march uh, in the suffrage parades. So this is not just, this, is, this was a struggle that was waged by many, many women around the nation. Uh, and th it's really the root of my determination to vote in each and every election and to be a part of uh, BPEP. Uh, we have to exercise the franchise. We have to honor our ancestors. We have to uh, protect our children and our grandchildren uh, who have to live in this world after we're gone. So vote. so much, Martha. I know that was your abbreviated version of Saturday, but uh, we might try to catch that another time. Uh-oh, in my program. Look at her, look at her. Ooh, even Miss Esther moved faster than me. I know, I, I know I better go home. Yes, sir. Well, we need to know that she's the first African American woman to ever graduate from the pit ball school. to be licensed here in Allegheny County. Is that correct? First. All right now. <laughs> All right, so we're going we're gonna to move on with the agenda. And um, again, we are really among some powerhouses here. And, uh, I, I ain't going to do nobody's poor, but standing next here to Reverend Ali Smith. Beautiful. If you don't know her, you better get on over here before that this evening is over. And her lovely, lovely daughter, Nikki. Nikki, we might end this with a song. Okay. <laughs> you haven't heard her angelic voice? Come on. Good plan. All right. We're we coming back to that. All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring up to the podium now Miss Frida Kenny, Black Women's Right to Vote. All right. All right. Miss Frida. Bring it up. Bring it up. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. All right. So when yeah, Lorraine yeah. asked me to speak, I will look that way. Thank you. I'm not used to the media. But at any rate, Lorraine asked me to speak on behalf of black women's right to vote and to say a few words. And it will be a few because I am a person of few words. And I think Sister Finch and Miss Polly had great lead-ins for 
what I want to say, but it's been said that power concedes nothing unless a demand. And so I'm happy to be a part of this collaborative, uh, the Campaign for Power. Uh, one of the things that uh, brought to mind was the suffrage that Ms. Conley talked about. And while the 19th Amendment was passed in the 20s, it was decades before, in practice, African American women were able to vote. And so I'm here to say and to encourage other African American women to be sure to vote, because not only is it our right, but it's our obligation to those who went before us. Thank you very, very much. Uh, we're gonna have coming up to the stand next is going to be Miss Eleanor Siegel. L-W-V-P-G, and she will let you know exactly what those acronyms mean. Welcome. <laughs> All right, just a second. <laughs> League of Women Voters Pittsburgh. League of Women Voters, and by the way, it's not just women. We have men, too. There's one right here. <laughs> Ron, we'll be talking to you later. Um, we've been around for a hundred years, and we are nonpartisan. But our our goal is that everybody learn how to vote, what to do when voting, when when elections come by. And in that regard, our website has one of the most comprehensive information that you can find anywhere. It's not, yeah, you, you, I mean, and we have been working on it for months now. So you can find about registration. You can find out about um, mail-in ballots. You can find out just about anything you might want to know by going to our website. And so I encourage everybody who has any question whatsoever to go to our website. Another thing we're going to be doing, we do every year and we'll be doing soon, is we'll be having forums via Zoom with some of the candidates in some of the more contentious um, areas in the city, in the county, actually. We cover all of Allegheny County. So, for instance, if you want to hear what Sean Parnell and um, current, what? Lord, right, Connor Lamb have to say, if they both agree to come, then we'll have that and we'll, we'll advertise when that will be. Our goal is to educate people and to get as many people out to vote as possible. We are so proud to be a part of this campaign for campaign for power. We're delighted to be here. We will do anything that you all need in terms of voting information. Just get on our website or call our office. We are here for everyone. Thank you. What's your website? What's your website? L L LWV Pittsburgh.com. PGH, right. Dot org. Sorry. It's all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. And sometimes we can't, in order to get some people to realize the importance of the vote, you know, they're like, oh, I ain't going on our website, but don't be on YouTube for about four hours. You know, but they don't want to go and see, you know, a couple of steps. A couple of steps did it take for you to make sure that your vote counts. Nobody has more than you. Just one. Regardless of what Trump said, go vote twice. You know. Okay. Well. Okay. So uh, we, we're going to leave his name out of that one. But um, what I did want to share, though, is so if you don't really know how to share and for people the importance, one thing BPEP does do is we have community forums and we, we vote. We bring out a lot of those candidates that are running for office, and we'll we'll put out what their agenda is. So if I can't verbally share with you the importance of voting, maybe I can say on his agenda it means this, this, and this. That means okay, let me break it down. You won't have no pork chops. You won't have no steak. You ain't gonna have no milk. Your wet program's over. Okay, that's just what uh, he's you know lobbying for. Now this one is talking about increasing your milk, increasing the nutritional food. Da 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 da. So just bring out the issues. That makes more sense to some people than just saying go vote and you know get out there and register. It's very important. You know, I, I once had a, a brief boyfriend who said he wasn't even registered. That was the end of the conversation. <laughs> so uh, so I want to go ahead and move forward. I talk too much, I know. 
We are bringing up to the podium next Reverend Liddy Barlow, Executive Minister, Christian Associates of Southwestern VA. Welcome. like a trumpet. And in a democracy, the most effective way to lift your voice is to vote. And the most effective way to shape our society into one that lifts up the poor, the homeless, and the hungry is to vote. And the most effective way to bring justice to unjust and racist structures in our communities is to vote. And that is why Christian Associates of Southwest Pennsylvania has joined the Campaign for Power in partnership with BPEP and with dozens of other community partners. And that is why we are encouraging every eligible citizen to register to vote, to request a mail-in ballot for safety's sake during this pandemic, and to vote early by mail. That is why we are encouraging every pastor in the nearly 2,000 churches that we serve across Southwest Pennsylvania to share that message with their congregations directly from the pulpit, to share it in their bulletins and newsletters and via their social media. In today's fractious society, we remind ourselves that there is nothing partisan about encouraging every citizen to lift their voice and exercise their right to vote. And so this fall, my prayer is that all Christians, that all people of every faith and people of no faith, that every one of us will lift up our voice like a trumpet and vote. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you so much. Got some young people clapping. Got some young people out here. And it is also my pleasure now to bring to this stand or the podium somebody with some very, very important words about election. If you don't know anything about the election, election process going to be involved, this is my man to hunt down today too as well. So uh, please welcome Ron Bandy's Vote Allegheny Election Update. the election and some not entirely late breaking news. So first, I'm Ron Bandys. I'm with Vote Allegheny. I'm president of Vote Allegheny. I'm also a proud member of BPEP and on the board of both the League of Women Voters of Greater Pittsburgh and of BEAM. BPEP, the League of Women Voters and Vote Allegheny and BEAM all recommend that the safest way to vote during the pandemic is with a mail-in ballot. Yes. Mail-in ballot. Yay. If you if you haven't registered yet, do it yesterday. If you haven't applied for your mail-in ballot yet, do it today. If you uh, people are uh, some people feel safer or better voting in person at polling places. We will not be consolidating polling places in Allegheny County for this election. We will have 1,300 odd polling places open. We have almost all the poll workers we need now, but we still need some more. If you are willing to be a poll worker, come see me. Now's a good time to sign up. Ballots are not ready to come out yet, so if you apply for your mail-in ballot, you'll have to wait a little bit for it to be delivered. Democratic Party is challenging some of the Green Party candidates, and until that's resolved, the ballots can't be printed. Lawsuits are holding up whether or not we can have drop boxes and satellite offices in Allegheny County. As soon as that is resolved, I hope to see drop boxes around the county. I expect that the Elections Division has a plan to deploy these if this lawsuit is 
uh, resolved favorably. So thank you all. Register, apply for your mail-in ballot, or vote in person, your choice, but do vote. Thanks so much. Sorry, everyone. Uh, my pleasure once again to be able to bring to the stand when you talk about a hustler, and, and I mean in the legal way. Uh, <laughs> he comes from history, history of family engaged in the political process. So as a little baby, he was running around with his grandmother and mother. They went from area to area. Community involvement. And he doesn't fall far from the tree. I think he's built a few trees of his own. He's a dear friend of mine and ours, a bee pepper for life. And he has a special announcement from the National Black Caucus. Mr. William Anderson. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, as she said, I do come from a long history of a political family. Um, and I actually brought the picture. With me. So this photo here is a photo of my grandmother, who her name is Evelyn Richardson, who was the senior member of the Democratic National Committee and one of the first African Americans elected to the DNC. And this is a photo from 1974 when she's on her way to the Democratic National Committee, and this is me at two. I don't know why I don't know why I have a, I don't know why I have a suit on at two. Look like I just came from a meeting. <laughs> but but that you know, as she said, the apple hasn't fallen far from the tree. So some 45 years later, I am currently the director of the Allegheny County Democratic. Um, the Allegheny County Democratic Black Caucus, and I am the Chief of Staff for the Democratic National Committee Black Caucus. And I was also the first African American um, elected to the to the um, Young Democrats of Pennsylvania in, in 19, 1997. So I bring to you news after traveling the country, and you know I was just at the march on Washington, and you know had the honor of being one of the leaders of the march you know, some 57 years later. So during our campaign, after the March on Washington and coming up with the campaign plan for the Democratic National Committee, um, Black Caucus, in our proposals, I was able to, in helping to come up with the proposals to get the, on behalf of the Democratic National Committee Chair, Virgie and Rollins, to announce that we will be adopting the African American votes. It's a lifetime commitment, African Americans vote in each and every election, and it will be part of the Democratic National Committee Black Caucus campaign outreach plan for this and going on into the future of every election. And it's part of every campaign. Because it is our idea that, Afri you know, we represent African Americans in America. So we want, we're, we're happy that our, our white counterparts and our other counterparts vote, but it is our job to make sure that African Americans vote in each and every election. And that needs to be a common statement because when the opposition talks about us, no matter where you go in the country, no matter what conversation you have, they all have the same talking points. They all have the same message. No matter how we may not mean, we may disagree with it, but you cannot deny the systematic attack that they do non-stop. So it is up to us as organizations, as partners, when we're talking to people, our main, main focus as African American leaders and trying to uplift our community because as we know, without the vote, there will never be any change. We can rally in the streets, we can protest as much as we want, we can have press conferences, we can have speeches, but if we don't show up, if we don't speak, as one voice, as one people, as one community about our concerns, then we will never have change. So we as the Democratic National Committee Black Caucus, as we control all of the African American vote in the entire country and all states and territories, we will be using this slogan in all of our messaging. So it, it is, it will come from elected officials from the top 
down. So whoever you speak to will have the same message that African Americans vote in each and every election. And part of that campaign is, if you see the shirt that I'm wearing, is my vote matters. So, so all my, we will personalize this so that you all can see the shirt that I have on. It's a photo, it's this photo here of my grandmother. So this is the first shirt that I personalized for myself. It's a photo of me holding this kneeling with my fist up at Black Lives Matter Plaza. So we will personalize this to everybody so that you know that your individual vote matters. So that you can't, we don't have time to wait for somebody else to do it. Nobody else is coming to save us. Nobody else is coming to rescue us. This is a world that we're at. This is about our lives. This is about our future. This is about my children's future, your children's future, our grandchildren's future, and what legacy we will leave for the next generation and what world we will leave for everybody to live in. So if we don't vote, if we don't participate, things will never change. So we're here to say in a constant voice, consistent voice, loud and clear, that African Americans vote when? In each and every election. Thank you. another zone she gotta re-register the vote <laughs> all right okay <laughs> thank you and uh, uh, again i also want to acknowledge mom the man action they'll be up to to introduce themselves as well hi Gigi. <laughs> i work with her too <laughs> and um you know next is not on the list but you know he can intervene at any time because he is the mr tim stevens he's going to introduce a new campaign that we have out here to get everyone engaged in what they need to do and some time frames, some deadlines, information will be out there. So if anybody didn't know, they were under a rock until after November 3rd. I'm happy to introduce Mr. Tim Stevens and I gotta be careful you give him the mic, he might break out a song. Thanks everybody for being with us. How about a hand for everybody in the house? Yeah. Well, outside the house. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Will Anderson, for working that out. It's a great accomplishment that our mission that we created in the Hill District 34 years ago will now be echoed across the nation in all 50 nations, all 50 states. Yeah. That's a great accomplishment. Thank you so much. Celeste Taylor showed me a picture on her camera today. I didn't expect this because beginning tomorrow, BPEP will have 20 buses for two, for two full months with a certain message. And I'm asking our partners here to unfold the message. It says register by October 19th, vote early by mail. Vote Tuesday, November 3rd, a historic presidential election, and with our contact information. This will be on 20 buses for two entire months. You can turn it around so they can see. Then you can turn back around again. This is our sign. That'll be on 20 buses for two months. Beginning October 1st, BPEP will have some 17 billboards which will look like this. We'll go up 17 billboards in various neighborhoods around the Pittsburgh area, yes. including Wilkinsburg and McKeesport. Yes. They will be up for one full month. Yeah. We want to thank Esther L. Bush, the Poise Foundation, the Macaulay Ministries Foundation, Wiz Khalifa, Woo! and my friend Tom Walker for financing this particular effort of BTEP. We are on the move. Collectively, campaign for power means just that. Come on back. Our Vice Chair, give her a hand, Valerie Dixon. Woo! 
Thank you, Mr. Steven. That is very powerful. So when you see that billboard out there, it might give you a little chills. You might feel a little proud. Yeah. You know? You'll be like, yeah, we did that. We did that. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> this is good. You can have a conversation with anybody once that. And they, they can go left, too. But uh, we, we keep our composure. We keep our composure. So right now, we want to have all our collective and collaborative partners begin to line up so you can share with the media, with the community, what your or the name of your organization, where you're located, what you do, and how people can get involved. If you could do that real quick in 30 seconds, you are awesome. <laughs> but we'll give you a little bit of time for that. And we have first up to the podium. Adorable, lovely, gracious, honorable. <laughs> I love her. I love her. Oh my goodness. This is Reverend Eileen Smith. Hello, everybody, and praise the Lord. You say, yes. Reverend? Yes. We got to praise the Lord. Amen. I represent the Mount Zion Baptist Church in Newton, Pennsylvania. I am the founder and director of the Minority Emergency Fairness Task Force in Pittsburgh, and I am the director of the South Pittsburgh Coalition for Peace, and we are part of this great movement, and we are planning campaigns yes. to, to uh, tell our people to vote. We are part of the power campaign, and we're proud of it. Thank yes. you. Yes. Good evening, everyone. My name is Marin Formley, and I'm the executive chair and founder of the Voter Empowerment, Education, and Enrichment Movement. We were founded in 2017, and we are working particularly in the communities of Homewood and East Hills, but we give information for everybody in this western Pennsylvania area. So we are having an online um, Zoom series called Voter Empowerment Mondays. It starts Monday, September 21st and it's gonna be every single Monday until two weeks after the election, just in case they take a wild account of the results. We're ready for it, because we're gonna we're gonna take it from the beginning all the way through. So we invite you to join us on our Facebook page, our social media, which is Beam Pittsburgh, V as in Victor, E-E-E, -E -E, M as in Milk Pittsburgh, all spelled out. Thank you so much. And also, for those who want to actually vote in person, we are going to be doing socially distanced rides to the polls with just you and your family. We're going to partner with some local transportation companies to make sure that can happen um, so that if people want to vote in person, that's what they got to do. Thank you. Hello, my name is Denise Hayes. I am here to announce that the Pittsburgh chapter of the Lynx Incorporated, uh, <laughs> we are committed to signing or registering 2,000 new voters for this upcoming election. And as a chapter, we will be out in the neighborhoods canvassing, signing up new voters and helping other voters to update their registrations. and making sure that everyone is encouraged and excited to vote in this upcoming election. Okay, who we have, who we have next coming up to the podium? Let us know who you are. Oh, okay. So we are Empower. Uh, Empower is uh, expanding minds and people organized and uh, working to end racism. And uh, we are an organization that uh, is a two-pronged approach. We have a volunteer a force that helps with the canvassing, going out in the neighborhoods and canvassing supports BPEP that way. And we also have, uh, through our creative graphics, have all types of uh, products, yard signs, giving people an opportunity to uh, actually uh, show their support, wait, finding ways to show their support, and then proceeds of the sales of our signs and various things go to support organizations like BPEP. We have been out canvassing some. Uh, we've been out three weekends with uh, 11 different volunteers, approximately seven volunteers per weekend. Uh, but we knocked on 289 doors, had 145 conversations, registered 11 voters, and helped 21 people uh, get their mail-in ballots. So if you're interested in helping register voters in low voter turnout areas, 
visit our website, uh, em2collab.net. <laughs> Bring it, bring it. Okay. All right, so we'll announce first and then I'll sing. How about that? Nikki and I are East Minster Presbyterian Church. I'm the head pastor there. Nikki's our head of staff. And we are just calling on all the churches to please actively get your people involved in coming out to vote. Our church is already gathering a bunch of people who are going to be willing to drive people to the polls. So we're very thankful for that. And I have a message for Tim. If you get me a billboard, I'll hang it right in the middle of East Liberty on the corner of Highland and, uh, and Station Street. I'll put one of those right up there. All right. My name is Nikki Porter. I am a gospel recording artist. I'm wearing a shirt that says Lift Every Voice. I was the choir director for the 2020 Pittsburgh Symphony Lift Every Voice Choir, and that is what I'm going to sing. And you are more than welcome to join me this evening. Lift every voice and sing to earth and heaven ring, ring with a heart. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song. Full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun. Let us march on till victory is won. Beautiful, beautiful. I knew I could sing. One day I was singing, and my grandmother come running upstairs with band aids and band aids. What's going on? That's how we sing, I knew then I didn't have a voice. So, <laughs> thank you, Sister Nikki. All right, we have next to the stand, to the podium, who's going to share who she is, where she comes from, how you can get involved. <laughs> That's a tough act to follow. Um, but my name is Laura Turner, and I'm here representing the Jewish Federation of Greater Pittsburgh. Our mission is to thank you. Our mission is to create a thriving, vibrant, engaged Jewish community in Pittsburgh and beyond. And we've been partnering with BPEP for almost 10 years, and we're a very proud partner in the Campaign for Power. Um, one of the things that we've done is, in addition to BPEP, we've partnered with several organizations in Pittsburgh and statewide, including the Center for Life in Hazelwood and Jewish federations across the state, to create this flyer, Exercise Your Right to Vote, in three easy steps. Step one, register to vote with instructions. Step two, secure your mail-in ballot. And step three, vote. Um, we're going to be sharing this with our community partners and local organizations so that their constituency will have access to this information. Thank you. All right. We have Mr. Art up to the stand. Intro. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Art Baldwin. Close to the mic. Um, my name is Art Baldwin. Um, I am no, um, I've been a around politics for quite a while. In fact, uh, I actually served with uh, Anderson's uh, mother as a delegate. I was on uh, Clinton's uh, Pennsylvania <laughs> committee. I was also on uh, Barack Obama's uh, national committee. And um, uh, I'll tell you one other thing. My wife was uh, one of the original people that was on uh, 
the women for Obama. Um, turns out that uh, my wife and I are working with uh, uh, 50 churches from Erie down to the border of, uh, of uh, West Virginia. Get closer. Uh, we are going. We are concentrating on. Uh, we are concentrating on uh, the Mon Valley. Uh, one of the things that we are very proud of is to partner with uh, PCAP. It turns out that the churches that I'm talking about is the ABBA. Uh, and we're also partnering with uh, a broader group across the country, which is uh, uh, which uh, represents uh, churches across the country. Um, and I couldn't agree more. We all have to get out and vote. I think what Tim and DTAP are, are doing is just phenomenal. And uh, I'm going to stop. And he's married to uh, Cynthia Baldwin. Yeah, my wife is, uh, my wife is uh, Justice Cynthia Baldwin. But we don't use titles in political things. So. <laughs> Hi, I'm Terry Meyer Spencer with West End Power, providing opportunities with effective resources. What time and what day have you ever seen an organization like BPEP have this many organizations on one platform for one agenda? This is all one mission. We have to do this together or it will not be done. There is unity in numbers, and we have to take advantage of this powerful, powerful agenda that is going on right now. Western Power. Okay, we got now. Oh, you need a mic. Small demands action. Hello everyone, my name is Georgette Powell. I am team lead for um, Pittsburgh Central Moms Demand Action. Uh, I also represent the Students Demand Action, which is funded by Every Town. Um, Every Town has been Students Demand closer, Action closer have been more. working, networking, and nationwide to register 100,000 student voters and 18,000 in Pennsylvania. So if you are interested in becoming part of Students Demand Action, text the word FUTURE to 64433. So Moms Demand Action is an anti-gun violence or gun violence prevention organization and um, we have been in, in, uh, in service for since 2012. Yeah, I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> Thanks so much for everything that you guys are doing. Okay, our next guest up to the podium. Wake up! Wake up on hook! That's okay. Wake up on hook. Down here? I stand up by myself? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Elaine Harris Fulton. I'm with Wake Up the Vote. Our mission is to inform, encourage, and inspire people to vote. We believe that it's not enough that you just vote. You must encourage other people that you know to vote. We, we have a program that we call Democracy Champion Plus, and we're having a training on September the 18th. And we want people to become democracy champions by encouraging people to vote. We also um, believe in the beauty of democracy. And so we have signs, we have teams of pole to poles who have individualized pole to pole signs, and they're free. I mean, voting signs, and they're free. Uh, we are also encouraging people to decorate their houses just like you decorate for Christmas. We know right. people, it is too important to sleep this election. We really need to make sure that everybody knows an election is going on, that everybody is encouraged, everybody is inspired, and everybody is informed. Thank you. All right. And, uh, Hi, my name is Bushra Muhammad. I'm from Morocco, but I'm American citizen. I voted for Obama first time. I was so happy and so excited. And now I'm more excited to vote than any time else. And thanks to Ms. Ellen Harris who introduced me to this. And I'm helping and volunteering. It's uh, 
good to do it. There is nothing else uh, more than uh, important than this in this time, critical time. You know what I mean? And on behalf of our Muslim Women Association, I say hi and we are with you all the time. And thank you very much. Uh, God bless you. God bless America. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now that's the picture, right? That's what's real. That's what makes America. The real America. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> So who else do we have that's coming up to the podium and would like to introduce their organization themselves, what they do, how to get involved? Okay. Hello, Barbara Johnson. I work for YWCA Greater Pittsburgh. Our mission is to eliminate racism and empower women. We've been doing voter, and, and voter education for over 150 years here in the city of Pittsburgh. And we are excited to have uh, another educational program that's part of our YW Wednesday conversations at noon. And so on in September on the 16th, a Wednesday at noon, we will have a panel of women who will be talking about the um, issues that people need to pay attention to related to voting and dispel some of the myths that are out there. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Josiah Gilliam, uh, and it's a pleasure to be among all of you with so many great organizations. Uh, I am here to represent Pump, um, and at Pump we have a tagline that says, uh, get active, be connected, and create change. And I think we have an opportunity to do all three of those things this year. It might require a little bit more um, innovation and creativity because of the reality that we're facing with COVID, but we're here to encourage everybody to please vote. If it's within reach, make a plan, check up on your friends, uh, and get it done. And if you vote, if you go to uh, the internet and Google Pump and voting, you will find a one-stop shop voting guide where you can find all the information you need to do just that, to make a plan and to get out there and make your voice be heard. So thank you very much. Let's get it done. No acronym, no acronyms, Tim. It's just pump. Pump it up, pump, pump. What happened? What up? Let's get it done. Like I said, get it done. Get it done. Okay, who else do we have that would like to introduce their organization or agency? Civic engagement person. He's gonna pull up our civic engagement person. He likes putting people on the stand, but this is the lady to put this all together. Our mentor. All right, Miss Lorraine. All right, give it to him. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. I am so excited to see everyone out here. And I think Terry uh, has said that it takes all of us. This is a unified effort. And this is something that we should not just do for this election, but it's something that we have to do each and every election. So we have um, a get out. Uh, power action song and so I'm gonna give you the lines and then I want y'all to sing along with me So first of all I say what do we do and what we do is vote vote and when do we vote? Each and every election. Okay, so here it goes. What do we do? Vote, vote. And when do we vote? Each and every election. What do we do? Vote, vote. And when do we vote? Each and every election. What do we do? Vote. Vote. And when do we vote? Each and every election. And I thank you all. And I, I hope that I see y'all doing uh, on November the 3rd. We have election protection where we'll be providing rides through the polls. We'll also be doing more get out to vote activities. So please stay in touch and uh, we'll get this job done. Thank you. She is our civic engagement coordinator. She's done a fabulous job. Puts in a lot of time along with Celeste. Hey, let's give them both a big hand. Woo! These signs just came in this week. These are our new BPAP yard signs. You can see them from across the street and almost around the corner. Vote. 
Register by October 19th. Vote by mail early. November 3rd is the election. And then we have our information sources, votespa.com, alleghanyvotes.com, and our BPEP website, our BPEP website, bpep.net, and our phone number, 212-8775. So we're asking people to take these. Anyone who sees this broadcast, want to come and get signs, put them in front of your buildings, in front of your church, your synagogues, vote in each and every election. We thank all of those who are with us today. We thank Valerie Dixon to get the signs. You must call the number 212-8775, 212-8775, We have 61 days before the election. This is indeed a historic election. The Supreme Court is at stake. The federal courts are at stake. The policies and procedures and directions of this nation are at stake. Your freedom might be at stake. How we behave as a nation is at stake. Those who believe that their vote means nothing, remember 2000. After one month in Florida, George W. Bush won the election by 500 37 votes. Can we say that? 537 votes, less than the number of people within blocks of this microphone. In November, on November 8, 2016, the current occupant of the White House won the Electoral College by 77,741 votes. 77,741 votes, which is thousands less than see a Nittany Lion game on a Saturday in a normal season. That's how close this election was on November 8, 2016. Those who want to keep the occupant who's in the White House in the House, you must get out and vote. Those who want to take him out of the White House, you must vote. Our mission is that we vote in each and every election and that those in office expeditiously meet our needs, aspirations, and concerns and African Americans see the connection between voting in each and every election and getting results that we request. We thank all of our partners who have been with us today, the interracial nature of what we have collectively put together, and let's say all, campaign, campaign, campaign for power. Campaign for power. And we welcome our new staff people. We welcome them to the work that they will be doing to source our community at a level we've never seen before. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Valerie, for hosting us today. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so I can bring you more videos on subjects like this and many other topics. Please leave any comments in the, in the comment section. Any questions or comments, I'll get back to them as soon as I possibly can. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.